so um, as you can see, I got the setup here. So uh, what, what all it is here is just kind of a newer kind of a newer thing. This is a rig that I got off of Amazon, uh, and then we got a 3D printed piece here, uh, and then that of course snaps onto here. The next part in the background to uh, to get all that started uh, and connected to uh, to the virtual camera, that's what we'll be covering in this. So um, you don't really need the rig; you can do that all with this. But I'd really recommend it for the full experience of being a DOP. This is uh, handy. I will link all the information and all the details of the stuff that I've put together here, the Amazon stuff, uh, and the 3D printed model um, that we, we mounted to this. Just using rubber bands right now, but uh, you can get fancy. Well, once I do get a bolt in there, I'm just gonna put the bolt in there, that's gonna be perfect. This is just a thing. Uh, and then also what you wanna do is, if you really wanna get fancy, uh, you can get like uh, an iPhone and you can hook it over here. Uh, and then you can see real time with a thing called Unreal Remote 2. Um, and you can actually see real time rather than having to look back here at the screen. Um, but anyway, so that's, uh, that's it. As you can see, like I've just put a character in here just so you can see what he's up to. Um, but yeah, if you can see, just kind of zooming around, moving like that, you can see it's actually pretty good motion. It, it feels pretty natural. Um, and it's only got two trackers, the two HTC Vive trackers. If you had four or if it's a pro, you probably get some really good tracking that. But uh, so uh, without any further ado, what we'll do is we'll get uh, we'll get started with the you know the the basics of how to create this particular um, camera that's bound to the Vive. So I'm just going to start a brand new 4.26 uh, film, television, and live events. Uh, this is just a brand new one. I'm gonna actually make it blank, uh, just to make it a lot easier. I don't need the virtual production stuff. I will click next, no starter content, and I'm gonna keep ray tracing disabled. I like to play around with that later, but um, just for now, I'm just gonna say PP tutorial. Oops, whoa, I, okay, tutorial, okay. I create that project, it's gonna take a second here and it's gonna launch right into Unreal. All right, so now once we have the uh, vanilla scene here, uh, what we're gonna be doing is just kind of, uh, there's a few elements in there, that's fine. Um, what I'll be doing is, uh, we'll, we'll just firstly check uh, the edit and plugins and just make sure anything to do with virtual rea reality is set up. Uh, I'm not using Oculus VR, but by default for some reason it is enabled. I'm not gonna worry about disabling it because it's not gonna cause me a problem. The one thing that you do want to make sure of is that Steam VR is connected and uh, plugged on. So um, that should be all you need to know about it. Uh, let's see. Actually, plugins. I'm gonna go here into the VR, or sorry, virtual production, and just make sure that virtual camera. It's just extra tools for that. I don't even know if we need it for this particular one, um, but uh, just just to be thorough, just make sure that one is set up and enabled. Um, so the first thing we're going to do here um, is we're going to right click on the content browser and create a new blueprint class. Uh, we're going to set that as actor and then we're going to name this virtual camera. When I open that up um, in the uh, viewport section, what we're going to do is add component. We're going to click on that one. I'm going to do cine camera. It's gonna be our main camera, and we're gonna add a cube. And this is gonna drive everything. So in order to drive that, we're gonna to need to make the Cine camera into a child of the cube. So you're gonna see this beautiful looking, ugly, well, it's not that good. But anyway, <laughs> that's uh, what we're looking at. So this, uh, the cube is actually driving the camera. So uh, we'll keep the cube visible for now, just so I can show you what's going on. Um, and then we're going to go into the invent graph and that's where things are going to get fun. So um, we're going to start with the event tick. I'm going to move over. And then we're going to uh, bring in the camera. I'll see actually first I'm going to do get tracked device position and orientation. So that there is going to be pulling the information from the HTC Vive controller, not the HMD. In fact, for the HMD, I would recommend for the head mounted display, um, because it's going to kind of try to take over, it's the default. Um, 
and it might cause double transforms, I would make sure that you start Steam VR uh, and then disable the, well, I couldn't find a way to actually disable it. So I got crafty and just unplugged the uh, HDMI from the link box. So if you're having issues with it kind of hijacking your scene or getting double transforms, or you just notice that the, uh, the tracker is not tracking properly and you're getting like, it's going the wrong way, just unplug that thing and see because it might be that causing some issues. That was my case. So it's been fixed ever since I've unplugged it. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab this uh, Cine camera, kind of drag them in, boom. And then I'm going to set, oops, I'm going to right click on here and then set relative, I can't type today, relative <laughs> transform. Wow, I really can't. And then we'll actually, sorry, we'll set that for the cube. So cube is the one that's driving everything, so that's what we make. Sure, we want to make sure. You'd think it would be the camera, but it's not. Okay, so I'm gonna connect the event tick over to this guy, and then uh, this guy needs the out position and out orientation to go into the new transform. In order to do that, you just right click on it and split destruct pin. Now you've got two. So I plug that guy into there, that guy into there, and that is it. Actually, I'm gonna get out here. Sorry, this guy goes in there. Okay, uh, so that's it. So just take a screenshot of that. That's all you need to do um, for this particular thing. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll kind of just place that in the scene and show you what I mean. Um, I did forget one thing. Hold on. Um, okay, I'm gonna go over this. This device ID is the uh, the ID of the particular thing. So for HTC Vive, this is what we're gonna. This is how it works. Um, I'm going to open up Steam VR because it's pulling from that information or the information from there. And here we go. So this here is showing us our devices. Now this is how it generally goes. You have zero and one are the base stations because those are the first things that ever turn on. Uh, the next thing they connect to is generally the HMD, right? So then that would be two. And then three and four would be your controllers. Now, um, Depending on which order you turn these on, it's going to be either three or four. Most likely, nine out of ten times, it's either three or four. Right now, I've disabled this guy um, by unplugging it, so it's never going to come back, but it still has been assigned number two. Uh, there's a fancy little way to uh, kind of figure out the, um, the device ID by throwing a couple nodes together and uh, printing out that result when you cl click play. I'll do that in another video and kind of just kind of go over, you know, how to quickly do that. Um, but for now, uh, we're just going to assume that this is going to be device ID three. If that doesn't work, switch it to four. That'll work. Um, okay, so that right there is going to show you that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to compile and we're going to save and I'm going to close this guy. And then um, I'm going to just click on play selected viewport so now i'm going to look at this guy and this is when i'm going to turn on my vive power and there you go so you get your translation data coming from there the reason it pops back is because getting away from the uh, sensors there but everything i do on there is uh is real time so now you can't see the camera and this is the reason we kept the visibility on the box because we'd have no idea any what's happening right now so i'm just going to cancel that and then now we're going to go back into the virtual camera. I'm going to turn this little uh, cube visibility off. So you just go down to render, visible. And then if you see it on the viewport, you don't see it anymore. That's that. Okay. So now the first thing that's going to happen when you hit play is you're going to go back and you're going to have this default player thing. Uh, that's not what we want. We want to actually pop in and uh, become the camera. So in order to do that, um, we're going to go into the... Uh, blueprints and this is the level blueprints so I'm going to open the level blueprint here and then we're going to grab this event begin play we're going to pop in a get player controller node and then we're going to create a camera actor so that camera actor is going to be the virtual camera from here I'm going to click and drag that Boom. And there you go. That's pulling your actual camera information in. So to connect everything, we're going to click and drag this guy over in the middle of nowhere. And then we're going to click this context sensitive. Turn that off. Otherwise, this result will not show. Uh, it is set view target with blend. Boom. So now we just connect everything over there. So 
event begin play always goes in there and then the return value for the get player control is the target and then it's retargeting that to the new view target so the get player control is is where we start off it's going from here it's going directly into there and that's happening as soon as you play so i'll compile and save that guy and now when we hit play we're going to get control using the controller and then if you've seen my fancy little rig which i'll show in this video um, we just snap this guy on the top and we've got a virtual camera rig that i've got as a shoulder mount and i can look around and see what's there and uh, you can definitely go into the settings and get really creative from there um, and then see it's pretty it's pretty good it tracks really well if you know the HTC Vive it's got some really good tracking so uh, if you the only bumps and hitches I get are is because the uh, I've got the sensors hooked up funny they're kind of out of view a lot of the time because they're too high they're not angled downwards um, that'll get you more tracking but uh, so far it's looking good you can get fancy here with the uh, aperture depth of field you know the lenses everything like that but right now i think the the coolest thing is just getting this thing working and from there i bet you guys got some really cool ideas of what you can do you can throw things in there you can drop in regular scenes but that's a pretty quick simple thing it took me a while to kind of fight and look at a whole bunch of tutorials online and try to figure out how to do all that stuff but i think i got it down got some really interesting stuff for you guys to take a look at here over the next little bit too but uh we'll uh, keep that in good time if anyone has any questions or anything, that just uh, leave me a comment. I'll look into it for you. But that should be enough to get you guys going for now.